I worry about a generation of kids whose rights not only have been taken away, but who have been taught by overcautious school administrators to scorn rights, to not believe in them, and to question them. When the newspaper staff at this California high school wanted to write about the firing of a popular teacher, administrators reacted in all the wrong ways, starting with an attempt to censor the student reporters and ending with the suspension of the journalism teacher who tried to stand up for their rights. Rights are rights, regardless of whether you exercise them in a school or whether you exercise them out in the real world. The staffers of the award-winning high school newspaper The Matador take their roles as student journalists seriously and want to cover the stories that matter to their classmates. So it's no surprise that they began investigating after the school's principal pulled a popular first-year teacher and debate coach into his office and terminated his contract. He didn't deserve to be fired. He hadn't done anything wrong, so we wanted to fight for him to come back. What do we want? Andrew hired! When do we want it? Now! Student protests formed. It was a classic student newspaper story. Popular teacher fired with no explanation. Of course, as a newspaper, you want to report on things that have a large impact. And because Andrew Nguyen had touched so many people, they wanted to report on it because of the reaction that it caused. It's still unclear why Nguyen was let go, and he declined to comment in this video. But he waived his right to privacy in a handwritten letter to the Matador's staff, and rumors began circulating about a personality conflict with the school's principal, Jim Schofield. In all my previous years of going to San Gabriel High School, Mr. Schofield didn't really come into our classes very often. But that past year, having Mr. Nguyen, he was coming in and checking on him all the time, and it just didn't seem natural. When I first started out on the whole Andrew Nguyen case, a couple of editors told me that they needed a photographer to cover a um, sit-in. My main interaction was with the principal, Jim Schofield. Uh, when he came out and he saw that there were students standing in solidarity and also that I was taking photographs and covering the incident, he was somewhat irate. After a student reporter asked Principal Jim Schofield to comment on Nguyen's firing, he fired off a series of concerned emails to newspaper advisor Jennifer Kim. In this one, he orders her to kill the story and suggests a fluffy profile piece instead. The principal's decision is very problematic. It's pretty clear that writing a story about a controversy over a teacher being fired is protected by California statute. Ken White is a First Amendment attorney and writer for the popular law, politics, and culture blog, Pope Hat. He says free speech rights can get complicated when you're talking about public high schools, but that we can turn to the Supreme Court for some guidance. For a long time, it was assumed that public high school students didn't have any more free speech rights than their principals wanted to give them. The key there was the case of Tinker versus Des Moines during the Vietnam War. Some students wanted to wear black armbands to protest the war. The school didn't want to let them do it. What the Tinker Court said, and what was really the high watermark for student free speech rights, was that students have the right to express themselves as long as it does not disrupt the educational environment. Ever since Tinker, there's been a steady march of school administrators arguing that speech causes disruption, and the Supreme Court, for the most part, going along with them. In the Hazelwood case, what the Supreme Court said was it didn't really matter whether or not the speech in a student newspaper met the tinker test, whether it caused actual disruption or could be expected to. The school paper, if it was controlled by the school and regulated by the school, was really the school's speech. And the school didn't have to be a platform for speech it didn't like, so that reasonable restrictions on what goes into the paper are going to be upheld. While the Supreme Court retreated on student speech rights, California marched forward and strengthened them. What the California statute does is takes the protection further. You can write things in the paper and the school can't punish you for it unless they're actual incitement to disruption. Now in San Gabriel, you had a paper that wanted to talk about the controversy over a popular teacher being fired. The principal's initial excuse was that they couldn't publish it because the teacher has privacy rights. What the students were doing was reporting. They were not purporting to make an official statement on behalf of the school. They were doing what a student reporter should do, which is to ask why 
uh, to ask people how they feel about it and, and to write what they find out. The staff of the Matador knew their rights and pushed back, enlisting the help of the ACLU and the Student Press Law Center. They began showing up at school board meetings, raising hell and demanding the answers. Does not collaborate. Instead, I found that the district bullies, harasses, and retaliates. I've always been an adamant believer of standing up for what you believe in, especially in the face of adversity. And with what's happened with the school, especially at the Alhambra Unified School District, telling us, you know, you can't do this when, in fact, we are, you know, protected, it's kind of reaffirmed my belief. And it's also taught me to be a little bit more skeptical about authority, in a way. Finally, the principal relented and allowed publication. But this ordeal was far from over. Newspaper advisor Jennifer Kim also oversaw the publication of the yearbook. And during summer yearbook camp, she had a run-in with the new principal after she allegedly tried to influence the content of their publication. To a lot of people, it kind of looks like this is retaliation for the Matador's coverage uh, during the summer. If this teacher said to his or her superiors, I think you're breaking the law, then that is potentially illegal retaliation. School board officials and administrators declined requests for comment. But every month, students continue showing up at board meetings and badgering district officials about their conduct. One thing that troubles me about this is that the principal and the school are not only disciplining kids, not only regulating their conduct, but they're modeling. They're teaching them values. And it bothers me when uh, people like principals and teachers model and teach anti-speech values.